Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up and use a grid with an Asaprite. So two examples that you might need a grid for, one would be if you're creating an icon set like you see on the screen. Another example would be if you are creating tile maps where each tile needs to be a specific number of pixels wide and a specific number top, and then you just position each element of the tile set next to each other with its own individual squares. So you could have a center piece in here and then the side pieces out here surrounding it adjacently. Or maybe you just want to put multiple characters on the same sprite sheet and you just want to keep them constrained to the same size, whether that's 16 by 16 pixels, 32 by 32 pixels, etc. So anyway, whatever you need a grid for, you can go up to File, New to create a new document. So we're going to create a document that's going to have many different sprites. So one way to figure that out would be decide initially how big you want your sprites to be. And then just multiply that by the number of columns and rows you're going to need for that sprite sheet. So I can do 16 pixels here if I want, and then 16 by the height. And then we just take each of these number and do shift eight for multiplication sign times the number of columns and rows you want on your sprite sheet. So I'm going to type in 10 here. And let's also do times 10 here. Obviously, if you can do the math in your head, you can just type in the full pixel value as well. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And what we're going to end up with is 100 squares that are all 16 by 16 pixels. So when you want to customize and enable your grid, you can go to View, Grid, Grid Settings, and you can set the width and height here for the size you want your sprite squares to be. So this defaults to 16 by 16, so we don't need to change it. But if you wanted, you can type in 32 by 32, if that's the size you're working with. I'll just reset that to 16 by 16. And when you hit OK, the grid's going to be enabled. The other way that you can enable or disable the grid is going to View, Show, Grid, also Control apostrophe on the keyboard. So this is going to make it easy to keep each of your sprites constrained to the same size since you have this blue border around each of these squares working kind of as guidelines. One other variant of the grid that exists is the pixel grid. So when you want to see every single pixel have its own gray outline, you can go up to view, show, pixel grid, control shift apostrophe on the keyboard. And now when we zoom in, we can see all of the pixels here. And obviously, as you can see, you can have those both in there together. Now, one thing I've been liking to do when I make a sprite sheet like this is to have a uniform background color across the entire sprite sheet. Of course, that's not required. You can just have this checkered background. But if you want to add a background layer, you can just go down here to the layers window, hit shift N to create a new layer. I'll just pull this down by hovering by left clicking it, hovering over the border of it, left click, drag down. Okay, so then we have it as layer two, I'm going to double click it to rename it. And I'll just type in BG for background. And now I'm going to fill the entire screen with the color I want. So let's just pick a color out, hit G, hit G to go to paint bucket mode, left click. And there we have our grid. Good idea to make the background color that is quite different from the one you plan on using. So if you're making everything very bright, having a dark background will help. So maybe blue or purple, something like that. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much able to just go back to layer one, hit B to go to pencil tool mode, and then start pixeling in our sprites as we need to. So as you're working, let's just create a few random things here. Uh, you may decide later on that you actually run out of space. So if you need more than 100 slots here, you can adjust that on the fly by going up to sprite and then go down here to canvas size. So in canvas size, we can basically set the number of squares by doing the same multiplication as before. So let's say we wanted to make the width double. So we have 20 squares wide that are 16 by 16. We can just redo the math. So I'm going to do 16 here, multiplication sign times 20, which is going to give us 320 when I hit tab. And you can see the new shape for this grid. Now, I don't know about you, but generally, if I'm going to expand my grid, I would want it to go out to the right or down on the bottom. So you can adjust the direction that it's going to expand in. So it's kind of in reverse here. So if you want to push the original squares to the left and then expand to the right, then you would choose the left hand side. So you can see this basically keeps everything in its uh, left side aligned position and we expand new squares out to the right. The opposite would be the case if uh, we press up here on the top options. But since we're only expanding the width here, we can't really see that. Let's actually just do 16 by 20 for the height as well. 
So if we wanted to expand uh, our grid out to the right and down, then we would choose the top left position. And these are our original squares, and these are going to be the space for our new ones. So we can just go ahead, hit OK. And now we have a ton of new squares to work with. I'll just go to the background layer, hold Alt to color drop tool, select the background color, and let's fill in the rest of the background. Then we can just continue working as normal. So that's pretty much in a nutshell what you need to know for setting up a grid if you're going to be creating an entire sprite sheet. Note that if you are creating an individual character and you just want to animate it in the same position, that you wouldn't need to use a grid necessarily. Instead, what you would do is create new frames of animation down here. So one represents the first frame. And then if you need a new frame, you can just click on the frame one and hit Alt N. That's going to copy frame one into frame two. And then you just adjust uh, your character on frame two to make the animation start happening. So using the grid is more necessary when you are creating completely separate objects on the same sprite sheet or separate tiles, not necessarily when you're creating a animated character. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about grids and setting up a sprite sheet for multiple objects or tiles inside of Asprite. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris and I will see you guys in my future video content.